Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day. He has an awesome newsletter at odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? All right. Uh Nice to have you back. Haven't it, talked to you for a while. It's great to be back. I, I heard you and Jacob. That was a great interview we did on Tuesday. I was listening to you. I just couldn't be oh, here. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, that so. was that was really thorough. You're always thorough anyway, but that was pretty cool going through that whole, you know, gold scenario. There's no doubt. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, I tried to look at the picture. A lot of people, you know, always kind of start the big picture, work backwards. Yes. And there's something important going on here, but, you know, the market, as far as gold goes, you know, if you look at GDX, it's pretty much unchanged since last August. I mean, I know. it's gone up, it's gone down, and inversely gone nowhere. Yep. Uh, so, you know, at some point we're going to, you know, we're going to start going somewhere. I, I'm thinking it's going to be quicker than sooner, but, you know, who knows? No, hey, listen, it's, it's today, you know, and today, Tim, was a big day because gold was down 20 bucks. It rejected lower price, had lighter volume. It's, you know, it's up 4 or $5 right now. But simultaneously, the dollar gave it up on price two, which you need. You know what I'm saying? The dollar was up 800 yeah. ticks. Now you're down 200. And if that dollar breaks, that's going to be it with gold. And, you know, the gold contracts, the last two days in the gold contracts have been huge, man. And you haven't had a lot of price movement. But the bottom line is that we both know when you start moving to a higher high, which they both did on both days, okay, Today we had 249,000 contracts. That's monster contract volume. And yesterday we did 238. You know? Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, normally this contract's doing like 80 to 100,000. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, they're, they're ramping this baby up. So, but we both know the yeah. gold market is always challenging, man. <laughs> yeah, I just, just. You know, we almost turned up. I had that. I think it was the X or the H U I gold ratio. Yeah. And uh, I was doing a, a Bollinger band on it. And uh, you know, if we close above that mid Bollinger band, and we were doing it on on December, we're right smack at it. Oh, it and I think, okay, we're going to go through. It and teased us. Off. So you know, <laughs> it teased but, us you know, beyond belief. Yeah. 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 It's kind of frustrating, but anyhow, uh, the bigger picture looks really good, but. Uh, we can start looking at some of these charts if you want. Yep, I got the first one up for you. All right, uh, this is just the SPY, and what's really important yesterday? What happened is that selling climax. If you notice volume, uh, uh, which is pretty much the middle window there. Yep. Uh, normally, if you get thirty percent or more volume in a spike, that usually either going up or down. That usually stops. Stop the decline or stops the advance. And wow. yesterday we had pretty much 100% uh, volume expansion compared to the previous days. That's sell that's the selling climax, and that usually just stops the market. Yep. Uh, now what's going to happen probably now to get through yesterday's low? You have to have it at least equal volume, if not increased volume, to get through yesterday's low. Well, that's probably not going to happen. So yesterday's going to be support. Yep. Uh, so. Uh, and if you also notice, we gapped down yesterday. Yes. And and so a gap's kind of like works works like bottoms. You know, if you go up and test the gap uh, on ten percent of the lighter volume, that gap's going to be resistance. So probably you're going to have the gap as resistance, and yesterday's or gap yesterday's gap is resistance, and yesterday's low is support. So we're probably going to flip sideways here. And if you notice, the market's up uh, decently today. And you got a trend of 1.59. I know. And, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I was going to bring that up. It's like the trend, folks. It's like, you know, uh, this should be like paranoia beyond belief, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. You know, it's, it's probably building energy to get that 10-day trend back up to you know, 1.2. Yes. And uh, so the, what you, panic is kind of a gasoline for the market. Right. So the more gasoline you got in your tank, the farther you can go with it. And the more panic you have in the market, the farther you can go with it. And actually, I got a chart. Yeah, I actually got flips the chart, too, real quick. Okay. And uh, have it. the third window up from the bottom uh, is the 63-day uh, trend, which is basically three months. Yes. And I, I labeled there the blue part 
is when the six uh, the six three day trend is above one point one. And if you notice, a lot of times, as long as that six three day trend stays above one point one, you got an uptrend going. Yep. And so you can have some consolidations, you know, but not major tops. And that's kind of what we got going right now. We got a six day trend coming in one point one three. So you're just kind of fueling this uptrend here. Yeah, I think we're not going to go really up this week. Probably, well, this week's almost over. But next week is the week before option expiration week, which I think is going to be a sideways week. Then expiration week would go up. Uh, so I, I hear the music coming. That's perfect. So. You stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. And don't forget, you can get Tim's newsletter at Ord, R-D. Oracle.com. It's Oracle.com. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 333. Nasdaq's up 196. S&Ps are up 54. We'll come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow up 343. Nasdaq up 197. S&Ps are up 54. We got our man, Mr. Tim Wood. The chart we were just going over was the uh, 63-day uh, trend. Right, uh, six three eight. So right now, uh, again, I did this chart today. We're at one point one three. You know, this this doesn't. Um, uh, it gets basically the, it gets you in the major trend, kind of keeps you there. Yes. When the, when you really have to worry when the sixty day trend gets down below one. Okay. And uh, the the tan areas and those red line areas are times when the trend uh, the six three day trend gets down. You know. At, at, one point or lower, and you know they they kind of tell you, uh, you know, you know, back at the 2022 high, you know, it's act, you know, right after that top, you know, it's telling you that the market was getting dangerous. So right, not dangerous at all here, and you know, this is the election year too, so they're not going to kill the market. So. Uh, short term, you know, a little bit fuzzy, probably sideways, but in mid term, the trend is up. And you really make the big money, I think, if you can hold into when the market is trending. And I think the market, not every day is going to be an up day, or maybe not every week up, but I bet every month up is going to be up all the way. No, you know, Tim, I, I, I appreciate all the education you've given us. Because the what had happened, today's Thursday, and on Monday and Tuesday even, folks, okay, they, we were we were running into you know I mean a one point two three trend a one point two zero trend, um, and yeah. it was like okay man you know people are really paranoid as Joe Granville said you know that climbing that wall of worry well you know you have basically took that that term and actually brought it into factual numbers which is so cool man because it's like I it's blowing my mind right now that we're at one point four eight live. Yeah. And the market's yeah. up over a percent. It's like really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just really just it's, it's basically a, you know it's fuel for the market. Yes. You know when, when you start really getting in trouble, you see a, a trend get down to point five, and you see two three days in a row like that. Oh yeah. That usually spells pretty much trouble. You know because right. everybody's you know everybody's on you know, getting along the market, and that's a bad sign. You know. So. Yep. Exactly. You kind of want to do what everybody else is doing, but do the opposite. That's right. So, exactly. Um, we can flip to chart three here real quick. Okay. Um, I have it. Is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah what, what it is, the top window is the RSI. Okay. And um, that's, that's all it is. And I think, yeah, it's a daily chart. And every time the RSI manages to get to 80, you know, you don't really want to pass 80 too much. Just you know, 0 0.79, 0 0.82, or something yeah. like that. But, you know, around 80 is usually never the final high. And a lot of times that kind of defines a trending market. Okay. And I I circled those areas in blue on, on the daily chart. I see and it. I did yep. those blue dotted lines kind of show you up where they show up at. They never come at highs. They always come, like, maybe the midpoint of a move or something like that. So I'm thinking... Um, you know, there could be some minor back and forth here short term, but uh, this is another indicator suggesting we're probably going to trend here for a while. This is so, if you're watching Tiger TV, folks. Remember, if you if you're in your car and you're not watching Tiger TV, don't be looking at the screen simultaneously. Just listen to the radio. But go look at this chart tonight because what Tim is explaining, which is amazing, is that those blue circles, folks, are like in the middle. You, you, you think that you were already, the spy was already up quite a bit. 
Well, when the RSI is running at that 79, 79.5 or whatever, you know, to 80, this is in the middle of the trend. That's pretty amazing, man. You know, just when you think yeah. you can't go higher, it's like, no, no, hold it. We're going to go higher here. Unreal. Yep. Right. And actually, you know, if you look at the uh, the tan area there. Yes, I see it. We, we, yeah, I see it. that peaks around 70. Okay. So you, you get uh, so what, you get an 80, and the mark keeps going up, and you start seeing 70 around the RSI or lower. Those are the times you got to worry. So that's the reason why I put those tan areas in Nice. There. I got it. Tan okay. areas are when the RSI is up around 70 or less. Yep. Okay. So, so right now what this suggests since we did reach 80 on the RSI here, I think it was back in December, you know, even a month ago. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of an initiation uh, of, a, of a trend market, so it's actually bullish. So and this chart goes back to looks about 2005 or 6 or something. Nice. So, yeah, so it's a test of time. It's pretty rare. It doesn't happen every year. But when it does, you really want to pay attention to it. Oh, it's, yeah. You know, we go over back 20 years, and this only happened, what, five, six times. So, yep. um, and we're doing it right now. So, anyhow, we can go uh, chart four. I have it. Yeah, we talked about this in the past. A lot of people kind of get all balled up in the market and, and kind of get too narrowed focus. But I'm presenting some stuff that looks at the bigger picture. Yes. And we talked about this before, you know, back in October uh, this the top window is the uh, NYSE summation index, and you need a selling climax. And right after a selling climax, you need a buying climax, and you can do this with the summation index. And you actually do it with volume too. But anyhow, on October twenty seventh, two thousand twenty three, we hit below seven hundred. That's the selling climax, and in two months, you like to see it hit plus one thousand, which is basically a, a sign of strength. We happen happen to have that on uh, December twenty seventh, two thousand twenty three. Exactly two months. I know. How some, cool was that, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it worked. That, that kind of worked. That that was usually they're a little bit longer than that, but around two months is ideal. And you folks, if months, if you've been it's listening, still work. If you got four months, you can actually that won't work as well. Right. And if so. you've been listening to Tim and myself, you know, as Tim's been walking you through this market. You know, this isn't a number that he, Tim, just come up with after the fact, okay? You go back and listen to those shows in August, okay? You're going to hear the exact same number because I remember as we're getting close to, you know, the, the December deal, I'm saying myself, oh, my God, I think this thing's going to hit right on, which, which it did, which is pretty amazing, right? Yeah, pretty. So if you look at, you know, the chart, this chart goes back to 2007, and they all came at major lows, you know? And, yes. Uh, you know, and even the 2023 low, this indicator picked that low out. And also, you know, the uh, COVID crash, you know, tell you. So we got momentum here, you know, several different ways of looking at it. So it looks like this year is going to be a pretty good year. So um, how high is high? Um, you know, I you know I had that one monthly chart on the uh, SPX. Where the head and shoulders, the head and shoulders that's was, right. And yep. had a projection up to 5,700, which is about 17% higher than where we are right now. And we're already up of what, 3 4% this year so right. far, I think. I right. have to go look at it. So it could be another 20% year again this year. So <laughs> That'll blow some uh, minds. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's kind of blowing everybody. Everybody's kind of still negative with stuff I'm looking at. I mean, as far as people's. Oh, yeah. Opinion of the market. Yeah. So. I mean, listen, it's hard to comprehend that the, yeah, that the, the, the attitude still out here is, you know, that there's, you know, the economy's slow and the economy's growing, man. So it's like there's a disconnect here and more than ways of just even the market, but it's a pretty big one. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 330, NASDAQ's up 197, S&Ps are up 53. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growl on a prowl on us out here. And after the close out here, folks, we're going to have Amazon coming out with numbers. You're going to have Apple coming out with numbers as well as Facebook and Meta. And it was going to be, what's interesting with Amazon is that Amazon just come across the tape saying that now they uh, are also introducing a uh, generative AI shopping assistant 
named Rufus. And Rufus, uh, you can ask Rufus anything you want, <laughs> uh, including, you know, is this the cheapest price that I'm going to get? And uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, I'm sure they're going to have that inside the announcement today. We got uh, our man, Mr. Tim Ward. The chart I get up right now, Tim, is the summation index. Yeah, so, you know, that's just kind of a repeat. Yes, okay. And uh, this, this was kind of like uh, projecting, you know, this rally is still in the early stages. Yes. That's one of them try trying to make. So let's flip to chart five. Okay, I have it. Yeah, the, the second window up from the bottom is the SPX VIX ratio. Right. Normally, uh, uh, when this when the S and P's are making higher highs, and that ratio is making ho uh, lower highs, uh, that's a di uh, divergence. And this is on a weekly time frame, so you'll have some on a daily time frame get divergence. But once it starts showing up on the weekly, uh, you got to really pay attention that the market's probably doing something that you don't want it to do. Okay. And so the Tan areas are times when the SPs are making higher highs, and that ratio is making lower highs. And now, uh, coming off of the uh, 2023 low, uh, the point I was trying to make, yeah, you know, the blue areas where it basically it's a positive versus both the ratio is making higher highs and the SPs are making higher highs. So, on a weekly time frame, that's bullish. So it looks pretty good, and actually, you can do another tape of one step further. If you look at the 2020 uh, too high, okay, and you on the S and P's, and you, it approximately is where we are right now, a little bit above it, right. But if you look at the ratio, um, you're way above, way it above it. Yes, to, you are. Yeah, so so that's you know, I'm not sure that's a, a, a legal way to do it, but anyhow, it, the whole thing looks bullish, so. Not saying every week's going to be an up week, but this year, uh, so far, it looks really, really pretty good. Right. So, and, and folks, we, what you're hearing here is that when Tim was explaining on the summation index, in order for that to happen, meaning getting into the minus 700 and the plus 1,000, that is saying and said that it's going to be a longer term bull, meaning the you know the year, and then when you combine that with this, it's pretty cool, Tim. That's no doubt. So yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's, yeah. So, so I don't think we're actually even going to. Well, things can change. You know, a lot of times you get uh, you know last year, uh, yeah, two thousand twenty three. You know, we had a ten percent pullback from that July high down to what an October low or something. And uh, I don't know if we'll even get that this year. We'll have to wait and see. Yes, but if we, if we see a 10% decline coming, you know, we'll have some graphs to point that out. Nice. So hopefully we will anyhow. That's right. So, but anyhow, we can flip to chart six. Okay, I have it up, the TLT VIX ratio, VVIX yeah. ratio. Uh, one of uh, your listeners uh, called uh, Jacob, or uh, emailed or something, he wanted to know what the TLT VIX ratio is saying. Yes. And it kind of, it, it did warn that we're going to go into a short-term high and that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, the SPs were going up, which is the bottom window. Yep. That ratio was going down. And that did warn that you're probably going to have some sort of a pullback. But, and, uh, you know, I've, I've seen it, you know. And, but, you know, if you, you trade all the wiggles, I've been tr I traded out of the market so many times. I got tired of, you know, trading out. No, I'm but, with you because when with, you trade out, the market's gone. That That's <laughs> correct. And, and this is where it's really nice that you have a lot of different ratios so that you can look at these different ratios and then just make a, you know, they were a, a, a basically, a, you know, a, a thought process that, okay, I think this is, you know, temporary and, you know, the, all these other ones are bullish, so I'm going to stay long. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's, is, that's, all, that's which is exactly always a tough thing. I'm trying to make. You know, it, so. we're not saying this is easy, folks, okay, but the bottom line is if you follow what Tim is doing, I can tell you this, man. <laughs> uh, the clarity inside the marketplace that you're going to have is a lot better than you have now. <laughs> that's just that's just a yeah, fact, yeah. and that's everyone. Cool. I don't I don't care if you've been in this business for 50 years, man. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, and so anyway, I want to point that out. That's that's kind of a bear situation, and how long it lasts? Maybe a week or less. I don't know. Yeah. But I pointed out the last several of them there, going back till December. That's right, because the one in July. That was a big one, and that's why, I mean, I'm glad you pointed it out, because that was the first one that actually you got out of the marketplace in July. 
And so yeah, it was stayed out. Yes. The market went down 10%. Right. I did lose a percent on that decline. And, right. You know, I kind of goofed it up. So, but, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, better than losing 10% or 10%. Oh, 1%, no, big time. You know, and, you know. and, and, and that's where the context comes of that you have more than one indicator, man. But the, the bottom yeah. line, evidently, a few of them had lined up. Okay, so right. next chart yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, the gold market here. Okay, this cool. Is, uh, Kind of showing this in my market letter. Yep. Uh, as as uh, the top window is the RSI for the inflation deflation ratio, which is the next window down, and it works pretty well. Um, I, I, the bottom window is the GDX, yep. and it's, it's the RSI right now on that ratio is below thirty. So once it gets below thirty and turns up, it's usually a buy signal. Okay. So. Um, and so, you know, that indicator is turning up right now. So I'm concluding it's a buy signal. So this should be some sort of a short term low. And I also got some red lines there. If you can see those red uh, yes, I can. lines there. Yep. Right. If you can see those, when the RSI gets above 70, it's usually a short term high. And that last high, we did have that, looks like about January, first part of January or end of December, we had that ratio get above 30 or get, get above 70, warning there's going to be a pullback. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at the bigger picture still. I didn't get out and uh, because at some point we're going to turn up and we're going to stay up for a long time. All right. Well, you and know, yesterday, you know, price-wise yesterday, uh, it didn't hold price. But today you just took out the consolidation, including the large spike from last week, and you have it with volume, $27 million. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's what Tim's talking about, folks. So the, those signs of strength are really important to understand, you know, particularly after you, you basically, as Tim said, you got underneath it. Now the bottom line, they shake everyone out, or try to, and then, you know, you go from here. Yeah, wild, man. Right. Let's, let's do a, a chart number eight real quick. Okay. And this is, the, this is one of the charts that I want to turn up. And yes. it's a monthly HUI gold ratio. Okay. And I did a, a, a Bollinger Band on it. And so, so this is a really a good trending market type thing. Once it turns up, it usually stays up. But you need to close above the mid Bollinger Band on this ratio. Okay. Now, last time we got a signal was back in, looks like January of 2021. So it's pretty much been on a sell signal for three years now. Wow. And uh, the blue the blue lines are the buy signal. Now we're going to close above mid-Bollinger Bands, the buy signal, close below mid-Bollinger Bands, the sell signal. And I like that ratio, or the, the ratio to get above the mid-Bollinger Band. If it does, chances are we're probably in a multi, at least a multi-month rally, if not even a multi-year rally. Off the races. Well, listen, Tim, it's always a pleasure getting that great education off you. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to uh, talking with you Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Love you guys. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.